Hello guys, welcome back to Yakuza Like a Dragon. Hope everyone's enjoying the video. The series so far. Elections are the cornerstone of a just and fair democracy for all. Running for office as a publicity stunt is trembling all over that. And yet, Ichiban Katsuga, an ex-Yakuza who served 18 years in prison for murder, has for his own personal gain, decided to take this sacred election with his candidacy. It's a sick joke! Listen to that. Sounds like he got the jump on you. Uh, you think? Strange that his campaign caught wind of the plan. But they're definitely trying to ensure you won't ever get near him. How? The whole reason Kume would have been obligated to shake your hand was because you were going to be the brave, noble underdog. But now he's trying to paint you as a villain, so he won't need to show you any respect. Oh, I get it. Well then, you know what? It's time to clear my name. Excuse me, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I'm Ichiban Tosuga. Hey, there he is. Turn the cameras on him. Seriously? A murderer? Running for office? Can you believe it? It's ridiculous. You heard it. He's a murderer. I gotta hand it to my opponent here. He's such a generous guy. He's basically advertising for me. A total unknown. Can't wait to check my campaign's followers after this. Thank you so much, Kume-san. This is exactly what I was talking about, folks. He's got nothing but sarcasm and one-liners. Why won't this ex-convict take our democracy seriously? Ex-convict? You trying to say someone who broke the law can't run? That I've lost the right? Naturally. Well, it's true. I was in prison for 18 years. But the law says anyone can run, no matter what crimes they've committed. I'm standing here because my application was accepted. If you deny my right to run, then who's really disrespecting the law here? That be you, right, Mr. Law and Order? I, uh, never said... I never said anything about the law. Oh, so you're admitting the laws aren't always so perfect. I, well, in this case, it's strange, isn't it? Bleach Japan loves going around telling the rest of us to follow the law. But how do we follow laws that aren't just? Isn't that kind of a paradox? Well, laws are what you need to... Are you asking all these fine people to just accept that paradox? In this case, we must! I see. Well, that sounds like a gray zone to me. <laughs> Kume-san, people don't want to break the law. They really don't. But just like the law ain't perfect, neither are humans. They both exist in gray zones. Part good, part bad. <laughs> I mean, just one little mistake can send you down a slippery slope. It happened to me. I made a mistake that led me to this city. Luckily, I was rescued from that mistake, but not by the law. I was rescued by the people who live in the gray zones. And man, they didn't ask for that life. They got the raw end of a deal. They were never given a real choice. They want to be proud, hard-working members of society, as much as anyone in this crowd. They know the law is important. I do too. But we also know some things are more important. <laughs> people don't exist to serve the law. The law exists to serve the people. We ought to remember the words in that order. Don't you think, Kume-san? Kasuga knows what he's talking about. He's got my vote. Yeah, I like it. Go Ichiban! He's telling it like it is. Give him hell, Ichiban. We're with you. Where do I donate to Team Kasuga? Screw that Kume guy. He's a leader. Kume-san, I think we can have a healthy debate in this campaign. 
Let's do this election fair and square. Why don't I come over there so we can shake on it? Yeah? Retreat! Retreat! Wait, what's the problem? Kume-san, you were in the middle of your speech! Wait, Kume-san! In a strange turn, this impromptu debate has ended with Kume, the frontrunner, making a quick retreat. The former Yakuza, ex-felon candidate, Ichiban Kasuga, has been generating buzz on social media. Useless! Kume, the staff, and even you are all useless! The only reason this happened is because you neglected to take it seriously. Enlighten me, Sawashiro. Why are you acting so strange? Got something to report? For now, we've decided to reorganize under a provisional name. The Tokyo Omi Alliance. We have sufficient manpower and resources. So I'll be assigning titles to... I'm sorry, are you under the impression you're the chairman or something? Huh? No. You had power in the Arakawa family. But I can assure you, it wasn't because you were competent. Kiss enough ass, anyone can get a promotion like you did. You haven't had a spine since the days when you were following me around like a lost dog. I've taken pity on you because we had a history, but enough is enough. The new Tokyo Omi Alliance needs a chairman who understands how to wield power. Well, that's what I am. <sighs> a bold claim. I'll give you 24 hours to prove it by killing this man. What? If you fail, well, I assume you know the consequences. I bet that picture he gave him was me. Yep. Kume should be giving a speech in front of that Gina <laughs> station by now. All right, today is the day we get him for sure. Stop. Shouldn't we leave the van behind though? If we realize we're coming, he'll cut his speech short and bail. Good point. Let's go on foot so we don't stand out. I just don't want to get into a fight because I don't want it to like interrupt uh flash. <laughs> I don't want it to interrupt the game or whatever. It's not sure that I'm not, not trying to fight. There he is, at it again. Don't let the staff see us coming. <laughs> I'll, get in, I'll get in front of the media to make him shake my hand. He'll have no way to avoid me Listen. that way. But then what? I'll suggest we make an amends about yesterday and pull him into the... Put him in the van and I've won. Well, be careful. Looks like they got more eyes than we thought. You sure you want to do this? This guy, the candidate, just like Kume. If you raise a hand against him, don't you think you'll damage Kume's reputation? <laughs> <laughs> Got some bad news for you. We ain't part of Kume's campaign. We don't live in Kasuka. Try it all you want. Nothing's gonna trace us back to Kume. All right, you guys thought this through. Hey. Let's not stand here and admire them. If we don't try to hurry, Kume's gonna get away again. Huh? What's the rush? 
You're careful to going down the flames because you'll be dead. Gosh. I'll show you how it's done. I got this. I'm over here. I got this. still hasn't noticed us. Musen it, Moragu? Your support means everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yo. <laughs> it's Kasika. The other candidate, Ichiba Kasika, is here. Get cameras on him. There might be another debate. Kasika. Will you continue yesterday's debate? No, I think Kume-san took enough damage yesterday. I actually came to make peace with him. Why would we ever make peace? Hey, it's hard to talk in front of all these cameras, you know? Wanna talk in private? That'll be way better. Let's just hop into your van here. Nice ride, by the way. Okay, okay, give him some space. Kasuga-san. Yeah? Chairman Hoshino's life is in danger. <gasps> the Komijul got an anonymous tip that the Seryu clan is going to be attacked. Chairman Hoshino is the target. And Song Hui said there's something suspicious happening at the Seryu clan. The chairman? Why him? I think we need to put a hold on the Kume and Aoki mission. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> what? Hey, are we done with Kume already? Something's going down. It's urgent.
So that that's the picture he he was showing. I thought it was like a picture. I thought it was like a picture of me or something. Captain Takabe! Kasuga. You shot! It was the Omi Alliance. About ten of them. One had a gun. They're looking for the Patriarch. They're going to kill him. His office is a ways up from here, right? Yes. Hurry. Please. Finally, you make your entrance. The Omi Alliance. Where's the chairman? Huh. Give the boys a sec. They're still cleaning up. What's that mean? Don't fuck with me, you assholes! Well, well here we go. Okay, come here. I got this. But I'm trying to get to uh, Hushin alone. You killed the chairman? You were late every damn time. Any job I sent you on, the smallest errand. Why, though? Why would you kill the chairman? This will be the end of the E. Jean 3. He was a tired old man who served as the Grey Zone's pillar. And that pillar supported Ijincho. Without him, it'll crumble unless we intervene. The young master agrees. 
Why are you two like this? Why are you so paranoid? You've already won pretty much everything, and you still had to kill the chairman in cold blood? Why would Ryo Aoki need to do this when he's already on top of the world? What if I told you it was your fault? What? Hey, Ichiban. Ichiban! Forget it. You know how important it is to the young master that he wins this district, but you got in his way. A felon like you suddenly decides to make a run for the seat. He doesn't like being defied. Especially not by the likes of you. Sounds to me like you're scared I could win. <laughs> Are you kidding? Not in a million years. Why else would you need to kill Chairman Hoshino? You know him. He doesn't even like to be inconvenienced. So how do you think he feels about this? Well, then why didn't you just kill me? Oh, I would have preferred that. But your campaign has drawn so much attention. I guess you could call it a timing issue if you need a reason. So you killed the chairman in my place? Yes. The e Gene 3 was the machine keeping you on life support. If pulling the trigger on you would make too big of a splash, we figured pulling the plug out of the wall would be the next best thing. Every time I think the young master couldn't sink any lower, he proves me wrong. What the fuck is his problem? What made him turn out to be such a bastard? I'm sure the both of us mean nothing to him. So why would he have to go so far just to crush garbage like me under his foot? What satisfaction do you two get from watching me break? Tell me what any of this is for! <laughs> is Arakawa-san's death your fault too, you fucking coward? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Doesn't really matter now, does it? <laughs> So we're zero! I feel he's about to see the snap. Oh man, he just had to pull out a weapon. Yeah, but is it really something to worry about? We were last time, didn't you? Yeah, but it was probably just luck. Either that or he wasn't really trying. And you don't know Captain Sawashiro like I do. Holding a weapon really amps him up. Uh, so this is gonna be a tough fight anyway you slice it. For sure. I mean, he's a captain under Arakawa the Assassin. So everyone be careful. Got it. Watch me. I was gonna say. Are you done with all the water like snap, but he already done that already. <laughs> Got this. Get a light. 
What kind of move was that? A way more powerful one than I thought. It's based on a Western martial art. Since when do you know martial arts, dude? Since always. The reason I fought with an umbrella was because I got the idea from an old martial arts book. And is the captain using the same fighting style right now? Yeah. Actually, watching him is really teaching me a lot that I didn't understand in the book. Damn. How many different martial arts does the captain know? Well, I think we're about to find out. <laughs> Makes me feel like a wimp. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Who wants to go? Bring it on. Oh, you think you can win? Are you done with all the fun and games yet? A gift for you. Right. You wanna fight? Come on down. Watch me. Let's yeah. go. Who wants to take this? Time to clear the way.
Have fun with this. Thunder and lightning. Uh, if I you can win. Cool. Who wants to go? Right. Ah. Eyes on him. Oh, there's no block in there. Watch me. Yeah? Are you done with all the You're funny games now. yet? something odd about this uh yeah not like there was anything normal about this to begin with man this guy is savage as hell yeah he's pulling out all the stops you've got to stay on your toes everyone well Watch this. 
Have fun with this. Not good. You sure you want to get wanna hurt? Fight? I wouldn't underestimate me. Let's see. Shiro, I knew would never just blindly follow orders. Not even the young masters. There's no excuse in the world that could justify killing Arakawa san. Yes, there is. To me, the young master's orders are law. My life's purpose is to protect him. My life's purpose was to protect Arakawa san. I know that. I know that all too well. Captain. And just so you know, I didn't kill Arakawa-san. Huh? I thought the young master ordered you to, because of me! He did order me to. What? But that was the only time I ever disobeyed one of his orders. I couldn't kill Masumi Arakawa. I can't explain it, but even as low as I've fallen, that was the one order I couldn't follow. How could I? Because you couldn't put aside your respect for Arakawa-san. Well, you think a Yakuza can't take out his own patriarch? No. That wasn't it. No? The real reason was... And I've never told this to anyone. Not even the young master. So why are you telling me? Just listen. The first time I saw Masumi Arakawa was only a short while before I swore my oath to him. I was 15. Just a dumb kid with no direction, no future. Back when I was getting into fights on the streets of Kamurocho, I had no money. All I had waiting for me at home was my drunk father's fists. The only people I could trust were the other guys who also had nothing. My girl was... Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember her name. Anyway, we shacked up and played house, even though we didn't really think it would last. By the time she told me she was pregnant with our child, it was too late for an abortion. What are we gonna do? We can't raise a kid. There's no way in hell. All we could do was pray she'd have a miscarriage. We just ignored her growing stomach, going about life pretending it wasn't there. No hospital visits or anything like that. But of course, you can't ignore an actual baby. She ended up giving birth in a department store bathroom, all on her own. I was working at the time, laying asphalt, as I recall. What now? Just pretend it didn't happen. Brush it under the rug. That's what you do with secrets. That's how we dealt with stuff our whole lives. Who was there to teach us any other way? No one. 
which is why. We're going to hell, aren't we? I know it. Why are you saying that? Nothing happened, okay? It's chilly out. Let's go home. <laughs> no, I can't do this. I'm going back. Are you serious? It's over. Just forget about it. Stop! We took care of it! Let me go! Fuck! What? Damn it! Open, you piece of shit! Open! That's the locker we... Does he know? Why else would he try to open it? Did he hear the baby in there? He had to, right? This... This is my child. Well... This might work out. Yeah. yeah, that guy will look after it. I don't understand. This is a gift, right? It's for the best, really. <laughs> hey, are you okay? Oh, damn it! So, Arakawa-san took your baby? That means... Shit! That baby was... Masato Arakawa. The young master. The young master... is your son? The boss told you about that night, didn't he? New Year's Eve. His woman was being chased by the Hikawa family. They decided to hand off the baby using a locker. How could they have known that there would be another baby in the same row of lockers? What were the chances? So you see how it happened? Arakawa followed the sound of a baby's cries and pried open the locker. Five years later, the mother of my child was out of my life. But Masumi Arakawa... He was still in Kamarocho. With my son. I... Is that... Huh? That kid... I did some research on the man. Arakawa started his own Yakuza family at a pretty young age. So he was gaining some notoriety already. I found out a lot. Like how the kid in the chair had never been able to walk. Because of severe hypothermia he'd suffered when he was born. Enough, Masato. It's not fair! 
I heard those words, and I swear they echoed in my head for months. Even if I'd never had a son, the Yakuza path was my fate. It always had been. I've been living my life half-assed for so long. Are you sure you want this? There's no turning back once you've sworn an oath. I'm sure. But suddenly I saw another way. I could swear an oath to Masami Arakawa. Okay. Then drink. <laughs> Arakawa the Assassin was his nickname then. He didn't fuck around. I get it now. I get why you swore loyalty to Arakawa. It wasn't because he was the legendary Arakawa the Assassin. That's what drew everyone else to Arakawa. But you swore your oath to be near the young master. Does he know any of this? I told you. This is a secret I've never told anyone before. Honestly, I thought I would take it to my grave. But then why did you tell me? Because there's something I want to ask you. Me? Okay, shoot. Didn't you notice there's one crucial detail missing from that locker story? Crucial detail? Use your head. If Arakawa-san took my son out of the locker, then where is his real son? Uh, yeah, good point. The boss said his woman's name was Akane. And before he met her, she'd been working at a soap land called Shangri-La. Shangri-La? Seriously? That's where I was born. Yes. So take this next part with a grain of salt. But here's my theory. On that night, New Year's Eve, Akane called Arakawa-san to tell him she was being hunted. She knew they'd find her at the maternity ward, so she left. But as soon as she did, she went into labor. She desperately needed to find a place to have her baby, where she wouldn't be found. So I think she may have gone to her old workplace, Shangri-La. And, as you just said, that's where you were born. Correct. But that... You're making it sound like I... It can't be. After the boss took the young master out of the locker, I saw another baby. You did? Mom! Mom! <laughs> Long after all the fuss died down, she and I just stood there. We were shocked. Our doomed child had been saved. And now we had to just move on. I have to admit I felt relieved. But... I couldn't see why a Yakuza had been so desperate to save a baby. Sure, maybe he'd heard it crying. But why the desperation? And he didn't even call for help. It was such a fucking mystery, it gave me a headache. But a few minutes later, I got my answer. Boss, is it one of these? Yes, hurry! Open up every single one that isn't locked. Okay, I'm on it. What are they doing? I don't know. I hope to hell it wasn't this one. He's not here. Oh! Gotcha! Boss! Over here! I found him! You sure it's him? Wait. No. If he's still here... That can only mean... The handoff didn't go as planned. What should we do? 
Take him to the police? No. I need to hold on to him for a while. In case Akane comes back for him. You think she's gonna make it? She said her life was in danger. It was at that moment I realized... The other man had taken the wrong baby. You took the wrong baby. <laughs> After putting you in the locker, Akane-san kept running. Right up until the Hikawa family caught her. I think that while she was on the run, she told someone she could trust about her baby in the locker. Just in case. I didn't recognize the two people that came to pick up the other baby. But if one of them was Jiro Kasuga, your foster father, owner of that soap land, then you're Masumi Arakawa's son. Sh shut up, man. There's no way. But isn't there? A DNA test would be a simple way to find out. Without a test, you'll never know for sure. <gasps> or if you think I'm talking out of my ass, just walk away. Forget I told you. Hell no. You think I'm going to just let you walk away after you killed the Seiryu clan's chairman? Do what you will to me. I had no future then. I have no future now. Why not? Ryoaki told me to kill Arakawa, and I refused. He clearly already decided I was disposable when he gave me this hit. Take out a chairman? Aoki wasn't expecting me to come out of this alive. All I am to him now is a third-rate hitman. My success or failure hardly matters. But then... I need you to answer me, Captain. If you didn't kill Arakawa-san, who did? I don't know for sure. But maybe Lieutenant Nishioda. He's the young master's favorite peon now, since Arakawa-san is dead. Arakawa-san's death is on Ishioda, then. Sawashiro. I still can't let you walk away. As much as I'd like to kill you myself, you need to pay for your sins the legit way. Pay for my sins? The legit way? <laughs> That's not the way I've led my life. What's up? I found out who gave us the tip about Chairman Hoshino being in danger. It was Sawashiro himself. What the hell? Why would he give himself away? To venture a guess. I don't think Sawashiro actually wanted to kill the chairman. What? I believe he was hoping you would stop him, Kasuga-san. <gasps> but he couldn't say that outright, because it would have been betraying Aoki. So instead, he leaked his plan to kill Chairman Hoshino, and left his fate in your hands. But that means we failed. We didn't stop him. Shit. 
You always made such impossible demands of me, Captain. Damn it!